Today in Final Cut Pro, we are gonna take a look at a plugin that I think every tutorial creator absolutely needs. The plugin I am talking about is called Markup, and I'm gonna show you why I think it is so essential for your tutorial creation needs. Traditionally, to do a zoom in Final Cut Pro, you would of course select your clip, go into the scale options, add a keyframe, and you may also wanna add a keyframe into the position. You would move forward in your timeline, and then of course move your scale up and your position to the location of choice. But if I play back, you'll see how the zoom is so wobbly and strange. That is where Markup has this incredible strength by using the Frame Zoom tool. So to get the Frame Zoom tool, go into your titles and go down to Markup in your categories. Over here on the right hand side, you will find the Frame Zoom feature. I'm gonna drag that directly down onto the timeline. If you select the frame zoom tool, you can see that it creates this rectangle in your viewer. If you drag that rectangle over to the location that you want to zoom, this is showcasing exactly where the camera is gonna end up. So let's say that I wanna zoom in onto the markup tool right here. I'm gonna click and drag on the corner and that will let me zoom in as much as I need. Now if I play back, you can see the camera is going to have this very smooth zoom in right onto the markup plugin. Now in addition to the frame zoom feature is the frame pan feature and they go hand in hand. To use the frame pan feature, click and drag from the titles and make sure that it is placed underneath the frame zoom. Set the beginning point to where you want the pan to start, then go to the center of the frame pan. That is an important step. Now, to change the offset, drag the X and Y offsets to a separate part of the screen. So let's say that I want to zoom in down here on the attention brackets. Now, if I play back from the frame zoom, we have this fancy zoom into the market plugin and then it pans down to the attention brackets. So those tools are essential for getting smooth animations on your screen recordings. You can also use them for regular videos if you wanna zoom in on somebody's face or something like that. It's far better than using the built-in scaling options in Final Cut Pro. Moving on from the frame zoom and frame pan is the focus loop. The focus loop is directly next to the frame pan. I'm gonna drag that onto the timeline and it essentially works like a magnifying glass. You can see I have these really nice on-screen controls to move it around. Let's say that I want to zoom in on the focus loop feature. I can change the scale of the focus loop. I can also change the magnification amount here in the title inspector, as well as changing the curvature. So if I wanted a more squared off focus loop, I can absolutely do that. Plus, if I wanted to change the center and actually have it animate, I can come over here to the right hand side, add a keyframe, move the focus loop over to what I want to adjust to, and now it has this great animation playing through. And then of course you can change the colors to whatever you need, your stroke width, and your stroke opacity. The next tool is the focus area. Dragging that onto my timeline, you can see how everything around the focus area is darkened. So if I wanna draw attention to a specific element on the screen, I can easily do so. Plus with these on-screen controls, I can click and drag and make them the correct size. You can also change the blur amount for the outside realm. If you wanted to go really crazy, you could click on this 64 and keep going way up as high as you need. So now you can see it has this nice animation of everything blurring out and just this area being in focus. Also, if I wanna darken the outside more, I can drag up the shading. And then of course you can change your width and height options directly here in the inspector. If you want this to be more of a rounded shape, you can also change the roundness here. And if you need even more than 50, you can actually click on that and go further up. There's of course the option to animate your center, your angle, and you can change your stroke again make it maybe blue this time, your stroke opacity and your stroke width. The next feature is the privacy line. Dragging that onto the timeline, you can see it immediately gives us this sensor bar. So let's say I wanna sensor out these words right here. By default, it's gonna have this black sensor bar, but I can come over here to the right hand side, check this box, and now it's going to be a blur and pixelated. 
option. We can of course change the amount that the pixelation is happening. You can also of course change your shape roundness and if you need to change the size, you can do so with the on-screen controls. The next features are for grabbing your attention. The first one I'm gonna show is the attention brackets. And I really like the attention brackets and that's because they're so modern, they're clean and they're so easy to use. Now let's say that I want to showcase the markup plugin icon right here. I can just drag that right on over. Now maybe I wanna show the entire window. I could drag it to the center of the window. I could of course drag up the scale so that the brackets are about the same size. Then I can go into the inspector options and change the spacing here to match the size of the window. You can also change the thickness, so maybe I want a thinner variation of this very item, and I could even make these larger and drag down my spacing. Then I could change the color. Let's try red this time. And so if I play through, it's got this fancy animation drawing your attention to this window. But it's so easy to just go ahead and change the scaling to whatever you need on just about anything. The next one is the attention command, and this one is really, really handy. So if you wanna change the position of this, all you need to do is click and drag and bring it down to say the bottom left-hand corner. Now this is specifically designed around creating custom keyboard shortcuts, but it can also be used as a lower third. So let's say that I want shift and command to show up and V, all I need to do is type that in and delete out those other characters. I can also of course change the font over to something that I prefer as well as making it bold and changing the scale and the tracking, everything you need to do, and the box is going to dynamically shift around that scaling. As well as having the ability to change the shape curve, the fill opacity, and the stroke colors. So it's a very clean and elegant solution to showing off your shortcuts. The attention pointer may look like a simple arrow, but it actually does some fancy things that I've never seen in another arrow tool. So let's go ahead and move this arrow down to point at a specific item on the screen. I'm gonna change the scaling a bit so it's a little bit smaller. From there, I actually want it to curve around a bit and that is where this plugin is really handy. If you see this handle here, you can click and drag and you can see how this arrow now has this really nice shape to it. And if I wanted to change it from a B spline, I could change it over to a Bezier tool. Now you'll see that now it has these sharp angles. But if I wanna change that, I could drag up the curve slider just like so to change the actual dynamic of the arrow. So now when it animates, it's got this nice smooth curve. This next feature is the highlight click. I'm gonna go ahead, drag that onto the timeline. So I'm gonna zoom in here with Command Plus. I'm going to move this to where I want to showcase the clicking happening. And I'm actually gonna move it a little bit lower so you can actually see it better. So if I play it, we've got the pulse, we've got the ring, and my favorite is the pop. So we can drag that directly onto whatever we wanna show that is being clicked. Then we could of course change the color to something else just to meet your branding. Finally, last but not least is the highlight line. So go ahead, drag that onto your timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the animation play all the way through just so I can see how long this highlight line is. I'll drag it to the center there and extend out the length so that it's covering all of the top row. Then I could change the width if I need to, just like so. And finally, if we wanna make it so everything is visible underneath, we'll come on up here to the blend mode, change it from normal over to something like overlay. So now all of those titles are being highlighted. You can also change the ends over to square if you want something a little bit more squared off. And of course you have all the other options with color, width, center, angle, so on and so forth. So if you're a tutorial creator, I super recommend that you pick these up. They are amazing tools to have in your arsenal and I really enjoy using them. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.